Well, it's good to see everyone in God's house today. We welcome you in the Savior's name. And especially, it's good to see the children and the young people in the meeting uh, today. And we do pray that the Lord will bless them especially. Bless us all as we meet in God's house. If you're tuning in through the social media, let me give you a very warm welcome to our service here in Tandragee Free Presbyterian Church this morning. Now we're going to sing. Amen. That was good singing. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes and let's seek the Lord's face as we come into his presence today. Father in heaven, we come before thee in the name of the Lord Jesus, our Savior. We thank thee and we praise thee for the love of God in Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. O Lord, we thank Thee. O, oh, t'was love, t'was wondrous love, the love of God to me. It brought my Savior from above to die on Calvary. We're just so thankful today, Lord, as we meet in Your house in this Lord's day for Thy love toward us. And O oh God, we come and we do pray, Lord, for every head bowed in Your presence. We thank Thee for each one here today each family represented. We thank Thee especially, Lord, for the children and for the young people. And we pray, O oh God, that You would encourage them especially today and bless them. And O oh God, we pray that all of our children and our grandchildren, the wee ones, Lord, will all come to a saving knowledge, a saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank Thee, Lord, that You said in one occasion, suffer the little children to come unto me. And forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. And we thank the Lord that when a child is saved, not only is it a soul saved, but it's a life saved. And, O oh God, our prayer is for the children here in Tandragee, that each and every one of them would come and trust the Lord Jesus as their Savior. O oh God, we think of this wicked, sinful world in which we live. O oh God, we pray, have mercy upon our children. Have mercy upon the next generation. O oh God, we pray in these days that you would send us a revival. O oh God, especially among the boys and girls. We thank thee, Lord, for the children's work in this house. We thank thee, Lord, for the mother and toddlers, for the Sunday school, for the Bible classes, for the youth fellowship. We thank thee, Lord, for all the different outreaches there are in this church in connection with the children and the young people. And, O oh God, we pray that you'll bless all your servants who labor week by week in all these different works, that you would encourage them, that you would strengthen their arm. And, O oh God, we pray for the children that live in Tandragee and further afield. We ask the Lord that as they're brought in under the sound of the gospel, that you would give us a deeper love for them. And, O oh God, that we will win them for Christ. And, Lord, we be very careful to give to Thee the praise, the glory, and the honor. We thank Thee, Lord, for the love that this church has for boys and girls and young people. And we just pray in these days, Lord, that You would move by Your gracious Holy Spirit. So undertake for us now, Lord. We just pray as we would seek to bring a word to the little ones today, O oh God, that there might be a word in season, not only for them, but for us all. We thank Thee, Lord, that Thy Word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So come and meet with us now, for it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Please turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to read Genesis chapter 1, and perhaps just a couple of verses out of Genesis chapter 2. But let's hear the Word of the Lord this morning from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament 
and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give them, to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that hath life and fowls that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the, earth, in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let, us have, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth." So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work 
which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which he had created and made. Amen. We'll end our reading there at verse 3, and we know the Lord will bless the reading of his precious word to all of our hearts. Very quickly, let me just make a few announcements. Once again, let me welcome each and every one along to our service today, those who are joining us in the main church and those who are joining us in uh, the prayer room uh, in the adjoining buildings. We welcome you all in the Savior's precious name. And again, those who are tuning in, we give you a very warm welcome today. Just a few announcements. Do remember the gospel service tonight, 6.30 p.m., and I'll be here in the will of the Lord to preach in the gospel tonight. And I'm going to preach on the subject one step from heaven, one step from hell. And our brother, Mr. John Porter, will be here tonight to sing. So come along again tonight, gospel service. Bring your families with you under the sound of God's precious word. Remember the time of prayer beforehand, half an hour before the service, six o'clock. Join with us if you can. On Tuesday night, we're having a deputation meeting. Let the Bible speak radio ministry. And the Reverend David Smith, God willing, will be here on Tuesday night to speak and tell us and bring us an update on the Let the Bible Speak Radio ministry. And there'll be a retiring offering on Tuesday night for that work. So do please remember that. If you don't normally come, you're made very welcome to come and hear of this work. A little treasure, start back again after the break, 10 a.m. this Wednesday morning. So please keep that in mind. There'll be no children's meeting this Friday night again. So again, let me remind you of that. Take note of that. Young people, your meeting this week will be at 7.30. Now, that probably was announced last week. You know that, but let me just emphasize it. Not 8 o'clock, but this week, Friday night, you're meeting at the church here at 7.30 p.m. So please take note of the change of time for this week. Then next Lord's Day, uh, the Sunday school and the Bible classes at 10.30. The services at 11.30 and 6.30 p.m. And our sister Grace Hill will be here next Sunday night to sing. And in the will of the Lord, I will be preaching at both services next Lord's Day. Now, during the month of November, just some uh, meetings that I want to draw your attention to. We're having three special nights of prayer. Monday the 8th, Tuesday the 9th, and Wednesday the 10th of November. So I would ask you to please put those three dates in your diary. Keep them in mind. Uh, uh, and let us get come together and really seek the face of the Lord for the work of God here in Tandragee. So that's Monday the 8th to Wednesday the 10th of November. Then on Tuesday the 16th of November, the Reverend Gordon Ferguson is coming along to preach on a very special subject, the importance of the King James Version of the Bible. And if there's a man who can deal with this subject is certainly the Reverend Gordon Ferguson. So keep that date in mind as well. We'll make a further announcement about that. But that special subject is the importance of the King James Version of the Bible and why we use it as a denomination. And then on Tuesday the 23rd of November, we're having another one of our special communion services. And certainly it was really encouraging to see so many there on Tuesday night. So again, keep that a date in, uh, in your mind. Now, I think that's all the announcements. So, let us just bow in a wee word of prayer before we come to discover what's in these boxes. Everybody wants to know what's in these boxes. Let's have a wee word of prayer. Father in heaven, we do thank Thee and praise Thee for all Thy mercies to us today. We thank Thee, Lord, for the gift of God which is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We just pray now, Lord, as we would come to speak, and especially to the children and the boys and girls and the young people. We pray, Lord, that you would have a word in season for each and every one of us. And Lord, we'd be very careful to give to thee the praise, the glory, and every bit of the honor. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to come down to where these boxes are. Now, there's been people phoning me up and 
in our home, what's in these boxes? Is there anything in these boxes? And some of the things that they've tried to guess what's in these boxes is totally ridiculous. Some, one of my boys, he's not so wee anymore, but he hasn't much chance. He says, there's a washing machine in one of these boxes. Now, why on earth would I bring a washing machine up into the church? <laughs> but we're going to deal with this box first, boys and girls. We'll leave this one here just for the time being. Okay. I felt that I would like to bring a, an address to the children this morning, and that's what I want to do. I want to speak particularly to the boys and girls and to the young people. Now, let me tell you, first of all, a wee story about what is in this box. Over this past number of months now, Mrs. Gray has been asking me to buy her something. Now, what she has asked me to buy her is in this box. Now, I know it's not right to say that women nag on at you, for women don't nag. Sure, they don't. Men can nag as much as women, but she has been continually, I'll put it like that, asking me to buy her something. And of course, I always buy Mrs. Gray what she wants. She's spoiled rotten. So she is. Now, let me tell you what's not in the box, okay? It's not a Hoover for she's already got a hoover. And it's not an iron, because she's already got an iron. And she loves iron, and all women love iron, don't they? And it's nothing to do with the kitchen. It's not a picture. It's not jewelry. I wonder, can anybody... Now, if, don't shout out. Can anyone tell me what they think is in this box that Mrs... And then knocked it over. That Mrs. Gray hasn't got that she wants. For I'll tell you this is not much that Mrs. Gray hasn't got. Ah, you see. Well, we'll find out what's in the box. Right? Let's find out what's in the box. Okay, he's all watching. You see it yet? Now, you wouldn't believe that Mrs. Gray would want an apple tree, would you? But that's what Mrs. Gray wants. She wants an apple tree to put in her back garden. Now, let me tell you this. When I plant that apple tree, and there's apples on it next year, it'll be an absolute miracle. For neither Mrs. Gray nor I have got green fingers. She wanted an apple tree. So, Orling, there's your apple tree. Now, I want to speak to you for a few moments this morning, boys and girls. I want you to listen very carefully. I want to speak to you about trees. What does the Bible teach us about trees? Did you know that trees are mentioned almost, now I didn't count every one of them, but almost 300 times in the Bible, trees are mentioned from the book of Genesis right to the book of the Revelation. Therefore, trees are a very interesting subject when you study the precious Word of God. Now, what do trees remind us of in the context of the Word of God? Well, let me tell you four things. I'm going to be very quickly. First of all, trees remind us of the creation of God. Now, we read Genesis chapter 1 there, and we read about the creation of God. And of course, you and I believe that God created the world in six literal 24-hour days. Now, someday you're going to go to school, and some smart teacher is going to tell you that this world evolved. And of course, that's a lie. That's only a theory of men, and it's, a, it's an incorrect theory, because the Bible tells us God's precious Word that God created the world in six literal 24-hour days. Now, I wonder if someone answer this question, and we'll see how closely you were following the reading. What day did God create the trees? What, what day did God create the trees? He created light on the first day. He created man on the sixth day. 
He created everything else in between, but what day did God create the trees? Well, I'll not embarrass the others either. God created the trees on the third day of creation. You see, the Bible tells us in Genesis 1 verse 11, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. So the next time, boys and girls, you think of trees, you see the trees in the garden, the trees in the countryside, you remember this truth that is taught in the Word of God, that on the third day of creation, God created the fruit tree. Right away back at the beginning of time. Isn't that a wonderful truth that God's Word reveals unto us? And you should always take the time to continually read Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, because it teaches us there that the Lord God Almighty created this world in six literal 24-hour days. And then, of course, on the seventh day, He rested. And that's why we rest on the Lord's day. That's why we come to God's house and remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So that's the first truth about the trees. The Bible teaches us very simply that God created this world. The trees remind us of the creation of God. But also, here's the second thing. Are you listening now? The second thing that trees remind us of is this, the fall of man. You see, after God created Adam and Eve, the Bible tells us that God put man into the Garden of Eden. And in the Garden of Eden, the Lord gave Adam a command. And the command was that Adam could eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he was not to eat of it. He was not to touch it. And the day that he would eat thereof, God said he would die. So you just think about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. God has given them this beautiful place to live in, and God has told them that all... The, now, we're not told how many trees were in the garden, but of all the trees of the garden the different fruit trees. Adam and Eve could eat them, they, they could partake of them, but there was one tree in the garden, this tree known as the knowledge of good and evil, and God said to Adam, the day that thou eatest thereof, you're going to die. So, Adam was aware of what would happen to him if he disobeyed God. Now, of course, when we read Genesis chapter 3, we are told that the serpent came, the serpent was the devil, the devil came and tempted Eve and told Eve, oh, you'll not die. Don't believe God. You'll not die. That tree is good for food, and it'll do you good. And you know, Eve was deceived, and she listened to the lie of the devil, the lie of the serpent, and she took of the fruit of the tree, and she ate the fruit of the tree, and then she gave it to her husband, Adam. And the Bible tells us that he ate of the fruit of that tree as well. That tree that God commanded, don't eat of it, for the day you'll eat of it, you'll die. And of course, boys and girls and young people, that's exactly what happened. They died. No, they didn't die physically immediately, but they died spiritually. They got out of fellowship with God. Every day, the Bible tells us in the cool of the day, the Lord would come down and speak and have communion with Adam and Eve. But that was broken. And Adam started to die physically. And of course, the day came that, that he did die physically, and his body was buried in the ground. And then, of course, he brought in eternal death as well. And that's the consequences of Adam disobeying God. You know what the Bible says? Whereby as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And you see, Adam, because he sinned, he plunged the whole world into sin. And everyone that was born from Adam and Eve, and that's all of us, the whole of this world from beginning to end, we have our, find our descendants in Adam and Eve. We were born in sin and shapen in iniquity. And of course, that's the reason why you're a sinner, and that's the reason why I'm a sinner. 
That's the reason why the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And boys and girls, it's a very solemn truth, but it's a truth that you and I always need to remember, that we're born in this world sinners, separated from God. We're born into this world far away from the God of heaven. And that's, of course, why we need to be saved and born again of the Spirit of God. That's why we need to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as our own and personal Redeemer. So, the trees remind us of the creation of God. He created trees in the third day of creation. The tree reminds us of the fall of man, Adam's disobedience in the Garden of Eden, and plunging the whole world into sin. But you know, the tree reminds us of something else. You listening? The tree reminds us of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, or the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. When Peter was preaching in Acts chapter 10, this is what he said in verse 39, and we are witnesses of all of all things which he did, that's the Lord Jesus, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. There's not a very solemn verse, but yet that's how Peter described the death of the Lord Jesus. They took the Savior, the Son of God, who was sinless and spotless and pure, and they nailed Him to a tree. They nailed Him to a cross. And of course, of course, the cross was made out of the wood of the tree. And that's what Peter was emphasizing there. You know, boys and girls, the Lord Jesus Christ, when He died upon that tree, He became our substitute. He became your substitute, and He became my substitute. Now, do you know what a substitute is? Now, all you young fellas that play football, or try to play football some some weeks. You know what a substitute is? A substitute is one who takes the place of another. Let me tell you a wee story just before we move on. The Todd family, they're all, listen to this now. You listening? They're all Manchester United supporters. Okay? But just the other week, we did hear this. Levi decided, I don't want to support Manchester United. And he made this announcement. He says, I'm a Liverpool supporter. And they nearly put him out of the house. He was nearly going to have to come and live with his granny and granda. I'm a Liverpool supporter. But you know what a substitute is, boys and girls, don't you? When a footballer is injured, when he's playing in the game, he has to be taken off, or if he's not playing too well, and I think that day... Liverpool beat United 5-0. There was a few substitutes that day. Definitely there needed to be. A substitute is one who comes on and takes the place of another. It's not right. And you know, in a far greater way, the Lord Jesus Christ, when He went to the cross and shed His precious blood for your sins and for my sins, He became our substitute. You see, you and I should have died for our sins. We should have paid the penalty for our iniquities. That sin that we were born with, that nature that we were born with, we should have suffered for our sins. But the Lord Jesus loved us so much that He came from heaven, was born in a manger, born of the Virgin Mary. He was born sinless and spotless and pure. He did no sin. He knew no sin. He couldn't even think sin. He was so pure, and He lived a perfect life. And then at the end of that perfect life, he went and he willingly laid down his life and was crucified. Nails were driven through his hands and through his feet. He was nailed to a tree, nailed to a cross, and there upon Golgotha's brow he died the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God. It's not, it's not a wonderful story of the love that the Lord Jesus had for you and me, boys and girls, that he would die for us and when we come and accept Him into our hearts as our own and personal Savior, confessing our sin, repenting our sin, and by faith trusting Him alone for salvation, He has promised that He will save us 
for time and for eternity on the basis of what He accomplished upon the cross of Calvary. Now, here's the fourth thing. That leads me into the fourth thing I want to say. The trees remind us of the, of, of, of the creation of God. They remind us of the fall of man. They remind us of the death of the Lord Jesus upon the cross. But trees remind us of something else, believe it or not. Trees remind us of the salvation of the sinner. You said to me, well, how does a tree remind us of the salvation of the sinner? Well, in Luke chapter 19, we read a story about a man called Zacchaeus. You've all heard about Zacchaeus, the wee man. And what did he climb up into in order to see the Lord Jesus? Now, even the smallest ones can can tell me that. He climbed up into a sycamore tree. And the reason, of course, why he climbed up into this sycamore tree was because the Lord Jesus was coming. He had entered into his town, and the crowd was so big, and Zacchaeus was so small that he could not see over the tops of the people's heads. So he climbed up into the sycamore tree, and the only reason he climbed up into the sycamore tree was in order to see Jesus. But something wonderful happened that day when Zacchaeus was up the sycamore tree. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 19 that the Savior came and he was bypassing the sycamore and he stopped and he looked up and he saw Zacchaeus. And he said to Zacchaeus, as Zacchaeus was up the sycamore tree, make haste and come down for today I must abide at thy house. And of course, the Word of God tells us in Luke chapter 19 that Zacchaeus made haste, he came down, and listen to this, it says he received Jesus joyfully. Isn't that wonderful? In other words, Zacchaeus, who was the wee sinner, the tax collector, the thief, that day he was gloriously converted to Christ. He went home, he brought the Savior home to his house, and this is what Jesus said, this day is salvation come to this house. And that day, Zacchaeus, the sinner, who climbed up into the sycamore tree just to see Jesus, he was gloriously and wondrously and everlastingly and eternally saved by the grace of God. He received the Lord Jesus. The Bible says, boys and girls, young people, for as many as received him, to them give he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And thank God if you were to come today and you were to put your trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, he would save you for time and for eternity. The Bible says only trust him, only trust him, only trust him now. He will save you, he will save you. He will save you now. So what do trees remind us of? The creation of God. He created trees in the third day. The fall of man. Adam disobeyed God and out of the forbidden fruit on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They remind us of the death of the Savior. Christ was crucified on a tree. They remind us of the salvation of the sinner. Even the vilest offender who truly believes, like the case, that moment that Jesus can salvation receive. Now, what about this other box? What do you think? What do you think's in this other box? You see, when I went to buy this tree, this apple tree, and he gave me a good deal, I actually got the two for one. Out there on my road, garden center out there on my road, Hutchinson's. So we got the two for one. But I said to him, I want to buy an apple tree because I'm tired of listening to my wife. He says to me, well, let me tell you something, John. Uh, one apple tree is no good. So what's in that box? What's in that box? Well, why would I need two apple trees? Why would one not be enough? Why would I? Well, wait a minute. First of all, let us see if there is another apple tree in it. Oh, it's another apple tree. 
Now I'll just bring it over here. I'll set it down there. Well, I've set it up a wee bit. I'll put that there. I don't know what's coming out of the bottom. Why would I need two apple trees in my garden? Well, there's a big word called pollination. If you don't know what that word means, you ask your mommy or your daddy when you go home. Pollination. The man in the garden center told me, listen, if you want fruit off your apple tree next year, you need two apple trees in the garden. Because if you just plant the one apple tree, you'll have no fruit. Okay? But you take the two, and you'll definitely have fruit. And if I don't have fruit next year, I'll be going to see him. Boys and girls, there's a wonderful lesson there. You listening? The Lord wants in our lives as Christians, He wants us to bear fruit. He wants us to bear fruit. There's a text of Scripture in John chapter 15. And this is what it says. John chapter 15 and verse 4, Abide in me. This is Jesus speaking to His disciples. Now, the disciples are saved. The disciples are Christians. They've already trusted the Lord as their own and personal Redeemer. But Jesus said this, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. And here's the lesson from the two apple trees growing together in the same garden. The lesson is this, that you and I, in order to bear fruit in our lives, we need to live close to the Lord. We need to live close. We need the Lord with us. We can't, listen, we can't get saved and then live like we want, live like we please, go on our own merry way and say, well, I'm saved now and uh, I'll have no more hustles in this life and I don't need the Lord anymore. I can just go on myself. In order for us, to live those holy lives, in order for us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need the Lord beside us. Just like that apple tree needs that apple tree beside it to bear fruit, we need the Lord Jesus beside us. We need, as He said to His disciples, we need to abide in Him. We need to live close to Him. We need, that's why boys and girls and young people, we need to read the Bible every day. We need to pray every day. We need to get into the fellowship of God's people every day. We need to come to the prayer meeting. We need that sweet fellowship with the Lord day by day. And the Bible tells us, indeed, the Lord Jesus Christ tells us that if we live close to Him and if we abide in Him, then we will bear fruit in our lives as Christians. The Bible speaks about the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, gentleness, and so forth, and so on. And that's why it is so important after we give our lives to the Lord to seek the Lord every day, to pray every day, and to be in His Word continually. And that's why I would encourage you, young people and boys and girls, make sure every day of your life, if you have trusted the Lord Jesus as your own and personal Savior, make sure that you are continually looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. I pray that the Lord will bless these few thoughts from the tree. And I hope you'll not forget them now. And when you go home today, your daddy and mommy will be asking you, all these different things that the tree reminds us of in the Bible. So hope, what are they? The creation of God, the fall of man, the death of Christ, and the salvation of the soul. You know, I just, I just thought about this one this morning. Let me read you this, just in closing. There's another, another thing that the tree reminds us of. And it's away at the end of the Bible. And as found in Revelation 22, it reminds us, the tree reminds us of heaven. 
say to me, well, how does a tree remind us of heaven? Well, let me read you these words. Are you listening? And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Now listen to this, verse 2. It's talking about heaven and what's in heaven. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Speaks about the tree of life in heaven. I wonder, are you going to heaven? Are you going to heaven? Boy or girl, mom or dad, older person, younger person, are you sure that you're going to heaven? Oh, I pray that if you're not, that even today that you will come and put your faith and trust in the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Let us all pray. Father in heaven, we do thank Thee and praise Thee today for all Thy mercies to us. We thank Thee, Lord, for all these lessons and truths that we can draw from even a simple thing like a tree, from the precious Word of God. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that You would bless it to the hearts of the children, bless it to all of our hearts. O God, we thank Thee and praise Thee for that day when You came from heaven you loved us so much that you went to the cross, went to the tree there and died for our sins. We thank the Lord that not only did you die, but you rose again, and you ever lived to make intercession for your people. Oh God, we pray in these days especially, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, help us to bear fruit for thee, help us to live close to thee, Lord, for we can't bear fruit without thee, except we abide in the vine. And we pray, Lord, that in these days you would Keep us near the cross, near the cross. There a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain. We pray, Lord, you'll give us all household salvation, that you'll unite our families in Christ. And, O oh God, our children, we think of the wee children here today. We love them, and we want to see them saved, Lord. We recognize they're growing up in an awful, wicked, sinful world. O oh God, have mercy. Send us revival. Lord, send us revival. Move again by your gracious Holy Spirit. We realize in the 1859 revival, there were many hundreds saved, many thousands, tens of thousands. And Lord, you did a work among the children as well. There was revival among the children. Oh God, let it come again, we pray thee. Let the showers of blessing fall. We're waiting. Oh, help us to be expecting, Lord. Revive the hearts of all. Lord, keep us safe in these days. Those of our congregation who are sick, touch them and raise them to health and strength again. And, O oh God, help us to be wise in these days. Separate us now in thy love. and Keep your hand upon us till we meet again in thy will. For us in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, folks, and safe home. <laughs>